I don't know about you, but when the snow falls, I get that itchy feeling as if the forest is telling me to get outside. Across the world, I suspect hunting and skiing does not go hand in hand, but where I come from, it does. Strapping on your skis for the first time means that Capricade season finally has arrived. As far as seasons go, the Capricade hunt is dependent on two factors coinciding, time and weather. In 2020, the cold weather never really arrived in our area. The snow never really materialized, apart from a few intense snowfalls that melted as soon as it came. We spent most of the season walking around in the forest, looking for that ever-elusive bird, which, in absence of snow, had more places to hide. However, as 2021 came rolling in, so did the snow. It was almost too good to be true, and with the snow came the high hopes. So high, in fact, that Peter and I came out almost too hot, and at one point, it felt like the season could be in tatters before it even began. Hope is a good thing. Hoping for a good hunting season and for the cold weather to stick usually happens, but you never know. Hoping to see a bird in every treetop, on the other hand, will probably never happen, but you must be allowed to dream. As we are getting ready to head out, we never expect to see birds behind every rock or in every tree we pass. But compared to last year, the minus 16 degrees we clocked in the morning and a bluebird day in sight means dreams tend to get out of control. In the films from last year, which you can see in the links below, we spent a lot of time walking to try and get the birds on their wings. This is a laborious process, but from experience, we have had more luck trying to create chances than waiting for them. Snow, however, means that we can dust off the skis, cover more ground, and hopefully get more chances than we can get on foot. Depending on the day, the baseline expectations is at least 15 kilometers of backcountry skiing through undulating terrain, through areas connected by rough forestry roads. However, to make things more complicated, this type of hunt means heading through both the forest and other clearings which have problems in their own right. The reason for skiing through the forest is to tread into the feeding grounds of Capricorn and stir the pot. On a day like this with low temperatures, Capricale tend to hide under pine trees or feed from the tree crown, preferably on the sunny side. If you succeed in flushing out a bird like this, you need to follow their trail. They rarely fly very far. They tend to seek out high spots in more or less isolated pine trees to get control of the situation again. However, despite primarily relying on the rise, they also have keen ears which can complicate things if the weather has let you down. If you've ever lived in the north, you know that snow isn't snow and it can take many different forms. This time, the snow decided to create an icy crust on the top layer, warning any birds within one kilometer that we were coming. Forcing our hand, we had to leave the best areas behind and search for better snow at higher altitude. The theory, and the hope, being that softer snow at height would mean we could glide through the frozen landscape and maybe, just maybe, getting closer than the 250 meters we manage in the morning. Using the forestry roads to help us gain the extra 400 meters in altitude is way more than a transport leg, however. Although this type of hunt is similar to a mountain hunt in many ways, sometimes the only way you can see the birds is through a small opening in between trees and branches. With this in mind, transporting from A to B becomes more of a high-speed stalk where you have to keep your eyes on the ground to not lose your footing, but also look for a bird the size of a turkey sitting somewhere high in a tree. As the trees got heavier and heavier with snow, our hopes grew. 
Moving closer to the top of the hill, you almost feel unwelcome in the snowy landscape, but you know it's exactly where you want to be. Compared to the morning, our skis would not make a sound and to us, a confirmation that time and weather truly came together in 2021. And with the snow came the first signs of life. Although these birds were black grouse, they are still a sign that there are birds taken to the wings and lucky for us, close to a vantage point. As you stand on what seems the top of the world, you can understand where the Scandinavian folklore King Winter comes from. It is the personification of the season and the natural forces and phenomena it carries with it. In the olden days, it used to mean the hardships that came with winter, but right at this moment, to us, it means being able to enjoy the hunting season at its peak and the ultimate hunt which is enabled when the weather allows it. King winter is a phenomenon you hardly have to look for. The skis we are strapping is a sign that we're prepared. We're searching for a different king, which is most commonly seen in the top of a tree, and we still have the hope to find him. Så du har en flagg, eller? Ja, den står upp neråt. Neråt höger. Jag ska tvärt. Jag såg att det flagg du, men... Då är det fjärdan. Man ska slå ner sådär så ligger vi fjärdar hela vägen. Grattis Peter! Riktigt 
bene ma si sta adattando si non è è bello si ma è sur Spreading the needle through freezing conditions could not be a more satisfying end to January and coincidentally the last day of the season. Although we were tired, we had to end the day with one last look across the desolate landscape and let this season become memories. As I said in the beginning, seasons come and go and they all have something special about them. As far as hunting seasons go, you can bet that I'll return just like King Winter next year and look for a black dot on the top of a tree. Thank you so much as ever for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know what your dream hunt is in the comments below. Until next time, quit jacked. Helvete! Satan skakar jag bröd.